Guys, now let's continue with the topic of intrauterine contraceptive devices IUCDs. Guys, this intrauterine contraceptive devices are classified into three generations. Okay, so first generation, second generation, and third generation. So, what are the differences between them? Guys, please concentrate. First generation IUCDs are non medicated or inert substances, they do not contain any drug, they do not contain any metal. Okay, example is lipis loop. Okay, so here. Whatever you are saying is the lipis loop and they can ask you as an image based question. Now second generation IUCDs contain copper. Okay. So this second generation IUCDs contain copper in them. Okay. So example is copper T380A. Now third generation intrauterine uh, contraceptive devices contains hormone within themselves. Okay. So in the exam if they ask you hormonal IUDs are third generation IUDs and they contain hormones especially progesterone example is progesterone cert and mirina okay and one important point I want you to remember that mirina is a levonorgestrel containing IUD okay they will ask you levonorgestrel containing IUD is mirina okay don't worry again we will discuss let's continue what is the mechanism of action of the IUDs guys Especially, let's discuss the second generation and third generation IUDs. Why? Because we are not using a first generation IUDs. So, just leave it. Now, let's see how copper containing IUDs are going to work. Guys, this copper containing IUDs, they will release copper. That copper will cause a septic inflammation inside the uterus. So whenever this copper is acting on the endometrium, the endometrium will undergo a certain changes. There will be a mild inflammation going on. So whenever there is a mild inflammation going on, do you think that uh, like a fertilization can happen? Yes, fertilization can may make it may happen, but implantation of that fertilized ovum cannot happen why because endometrium is inflamed so it prevents the implantation of a fertilized ovum even if the ovum is fertilized there will be a problem with the implantation that's what's happening with the second generation iud's that's copper containing iud's and also sometimes these iud's can hinder the ascent of the sperm they won't let the sperm to move towards the fallopian tubes and towards the ovum maybe because there is a there is a mechanical obstruction okay because of this uh, <clears throat> iud now let's see hormonal iud's these hormonal iud's release hormones especially progesterone that hormones will brings the decidualization of the endometrium okay decidualization of endometrium and atrophy of the endometrial glands Okay, so do if you think that so for pregnancy decidualization is favorable? No. See for implantation, the endometrium should be in a proper phase. Okay, because of this uh, too much amount of progesterones, the endometrium is out of phase. Yes, there is a decidualization, but there is out of phase endometrium. That out of phase endometrium won't help for the implantation to happen so please concentrate it inhibits the implantation and also this hormone containing iud's they will make the cervical mucus impermeable to sperms we already know that progesterone will make the cervical mucus thickened and in certain cases almost 40 percent of the cases this hormone containing iud's will also inhibit the ovulation high amount of progesterone means giving negative feedback to lh so whenever there is no lh surge there is no ovulation Guys, in this image, see this is a copper containing IUD. How can I say? Why? Because you can see on its arms there is a copper, on its stem there is a copper. But here, this is not a copper containing IUD. This is a third generation IUD, which is a hormonal IUD. Why? Because there is no copper over it. This is also a hormonal IUD. This is also a hormonal IUD. Copper containing IUDs, you can identify it with the copper winding around the stem and arms. Now, let's see some important lifespans of intrauterine devices. Usually, intrauterine devices last for almost 3 years on an average. But some important lifespans which are uh, worth mentioning for exam are copper T380A. Which generation IUD guys? Copper T. Copper means second generation IUD. Copper T380A, it can be there. It can work for almost 10 years. Progesterone cert. 
is going to work for one year and Merina it can work for almost five years. Okay. Now let's continue. Let's see some important points about the copper T three eighty A. First of all, let's see why it is known as a T copper T. We know why it is known as a copper. Why? Because it have copper around its stem and arms. Why it is called as a T? Why? Because it's a T shape. Okay, it's a T shape. And why it is? What is this three eighty and what is this A? Guys, this three eighty represents. Please concentrate. Three eighty represents total surface area of the copper. Okay, it represents total area of the copper wire. That is a three eighty mm square. And remember, in this three eighty, in this three eighty, three fourteen mm square is present on the stem, and on each arm, on each arm there is a thirty three mm square, thirty three mm square on each arm, and on the stem it is three fourteen mm square. Okay. Now after this, what is this? Ye, ye represents that there is a presence of a copper even on the arms. See, you can see there is presence of copper on the arms. Why? Because for certain copper teas, there is no copper on the arms. Okay. This is the question. Ye represents copper present on the arms. It's a freely distributed by the government. It's a cost free and. It releases fifty micrograms of copper every day, and that causes mild aseptic inflammation. What's the method of insertion, guys? Guys, this is very very important MCQ. Usually, if a female is undergoing uh, intrauterine device implantation, she is at a risk of developing sexually transmitted diseases and pelvic inflammatory diseases. Not sexually transmitted diseases, actually. Uh, sorry for the point. Actually, if a female is undergoing implantation of this uh, intrauterine device, she is at risk of developing pelvic inflammatory disease. Why? Because uh, when you are trying to uh, put this intrauterine device into the uterus, you may take some bacteria from outside, or you can you may take some bacteria which is present in the vagina into the uterine cavity. That can cause upper reproductive tract inflammation that's a pelvic inflammatory disease so you need to be very very careful and all this procedure should be done in a very aseptic environment so there is a method known as a withdrawal method using no touch technique so by using this technique no touch technique and withdrawal method we are going to place the uh, copper tea inside the uterus okay and what is the only copper tea approved in india the only copper tea approved in india is copper tea 380a and this copper tea 380a as we have already discussed that's going to be effective for 10 years but remember most common copper tea used in the world is it is silver line copper tea okay it's a silver line copper tea 380ag okay ag for silver okay so in india the only thing which is available is Copper T three eighty A, but most commonly used copper T is silver line copper T three eighty A G. Okay. Having said that, let's go with the complications of intrauterine devices. Let's see what are the complications which a female will have. The most common complication is a bleeding. Okay. After the placement of this intrauterine device, she can have irregular menstrual bleeding, and there will be a lot of pain. Okay. Some females will experience a lot of pain, and this pain is one of the reason, one of the most common reason for the removal of IUCD. Okay, after this, expulsion rate. Okay, guys, uh, when you are you are keeping some copper tea into the uterus, the uterus might get irritated because of the uterine contractions. This copper tea may be expelled out. Increased risk of infections. Guys, I have already said when. a copper t is being placed in the uterine cavity lot of chances that she may get a pelvic inflammatory disease so what is the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease guys the most common cause is a chlamydia so we have to give the drugs which can inhibit the growth of chlamydia what are they it's the drug of choice for chlamydia is azithromycin doxycycline both are the drug of choice for chlamydia so before inserting this intrauterine contraceptive device the patient was given with uh, doxycycline as well as azithromycin one hour before the insertion to prevent the um, pelvic inflammatory disease guys one more important point i want you to remember that is see 
insertion of the pelvic uh, insertion of the intrauterine device increases the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease there is no doubt but if someone ask you what is the most common infection seen with intrauterine devices it's not the pelvic inflammatory disease or it's not the chlamydia here the answer is actinomyces okay actinomyces infections are most common uh, infections associated with the copper t use now when uh, we are inserting this copper t there is a chance that this copper t may perforate the uterine wall so perforation can be seen so that can be a complication of intrauterine device and ectopic pregnancy this is my favorite okay this is my favorite very very important guys usually just think putting an intrauterine device usually prevent the pregnancy so how can ectopic pregnancy happen usually if a female is on intrauterine contraceptive device usually pregnant sh pregnancy sh shouldn't happen so how can ectopic pregnancy happen in this case see the point is very clear that having intrauterine contraceptive devices does not increases the risk of ectopic pregnancy but if this intrauterine contraceptive device if it fails in its function if it fails in its function because of some reasons see nothing is ideal right if it fails then pregnancy will happen now this pregnancy which have happened with the intrauterine contraceptive device in its place now this pregnancy 30% of the times will be ectopic pregnancy okay see currently current iud used does not increase the risk of ectopic pregnancy however a pregnancy with iud inside two means inside there is intrauterine contraceptive device it failed that is the reason why a pregnancy happened now this pregnancy will be mostly ectopic pregnancy 30% of the times that this will be definitely ectopic pregnancy okay now what are the absolute contraindications for iud in which conditions you are never supposed to put an intrauterine contraceptive device so if there is a puerperal sepsis or post abortal sepsis okay so uh, whenever there is unexplained vaginal bleeding it's coming everywhere whenever there is a current pad or sexually transmitted disease or pelvic tb if something is going wrong in the uterus don't do it okay whenever there is un, like you know unexplained vaginal bleeding don't do it a cervical cancer or endometrial cancer guys if the patient is having cervical cancer or endometrial cancer this is too much deleterious okay so in these conditions you are supposed to do hysterectomy okay you, you you need to take out the entire uterus sometimes in these conditions don't keep any intrauterine contraceptive devices if possible take out the uterus why because you know it's a cancer now if the patient is having ovarian cancer especially levonorgestrel containing iud's are not given what is a levonorgestrel containing iud guys mirena okay now in the conditions of uh, gestational trophoblastic neoplasias uterine distortion or uterine anomalies if there is a uterine anomaly in those conditions don't give this intrauterine contraceptive device because that can uh, that can perforate the uterus or it can easily dislodge from that position okay now if the person is having copper allergy or wilson's disease especially in these conditions you are not supposed to put a copper containing iud why because the person is allergic to copper and even what is a wilson disease guys wilson disease is nothing but too much accumulation of copper in the body so in this condition if you are trying to put a copper containing intrauterine devices which release 50 microgram of copper every day do you think that's a good no definitely not so in these conditions you are not supposed to use an intrauterine contraceptive device now after this let's see some important points about mirena okay mirena is which generation uh, contraceptive uh, which generation iud guys it's a third generation intrauterine contraceptive device which contains a leven or gestrel this is important okay it contains 52 microgram of a leven or gestrel and it releases a 20 microgram okay it releases 20 mcg not milligram it releases 20 microgram every day what's the lifespan guys we have already seen it's a 5 years what about the copper t 380a 10 years what about progestazert one year guys please just note most common reason for removal of an iud is see what's the most common symptom the most common symptom is a bleeding but the what's the most common reason for the iud removal it is a pain okay important now a contraception of choice if a female is already hiv positive 
and she wants a contraception so in hiv positive females the contraception of choice is intrauterine contraceptive devices along with the barriers okay so this is the contraception of choice okay why because why barriers are used why because to prevent the sexually transmitted disease yes like in this case it's a hiv so to prevent the transfer of hiv barrier methods are used and to prevent the pregnancy from happening intrauterine contraceptive devices are used so both a combination of intrauterine contraceptive devices as well as barriers is a contraceptive of choice for hiv positive a female now let's see what if pregnancy happened with an intact intrauterine contraceptive device with an intact intrauterine contraceptive device what if pregnancy happen okay see this is a real photo where the baby was born with a contraceptive device in his hand okay means a contraceptive device is already there in the uterus but pregnancy happened so what to do guys please concentrate if pregnancy occurs with an intact intrauterine contraceptive device 30% of the cases are topic i have already said okay a failed intraceptive uh, intrauterine contraceptive device may cause pregnancy which is almost uh, ectopic now what to do management see you can continue the pregnancy okay if a female is uh, willing to continue her pregnancy okay let her continue or you can go with the abortion about abortion nothing to discuss like you know why because you can give uh, some uh, drugs that can cause abortion what if pregnancy is continuing a female is willing to continue her pregnancy with an intact intrauterine contraceptive device what should we do see if there is a possibility to remove the device remove it how means see if the patient wishes to continue the pregnancy do an ultrasonography okay now find out where is where is the location of that intrauterine contraceptive device if it is accessible to remove okay it's if it's not in the fundal region okay if it's not in the fundal region if it's lying in the lower segments with ultrasound guidance remove it carefully or if it's lying in a very high position especially in the fundal region if it's lying in the fundal region just leave it okay just leave it in its own place just don't intervene allow the pregnancy to continue but now the question will there be any complications will there be any complications with the inside to iucd yes there are complications so warn the female see you are willing to continue the pregnancy but there are a certain problems what there might be an infection okay there can be an infection happen okay or there can be a preterm labor or premature rupture of membranes or intrauterine growth restriction anything can happen because of that because of that intrauterine contraceptive device it won't let the baby to that intrauterine contraceptive device a proper space that's intrauterine growth re uh, restriction prom prom means because of the intrauterine contraceptive device that may perforate the amniotic cavity so prematurely the membranes are ruptured see whenever the premature rupture of membranes is there that can lead to preterm labor okay so and even because of that rupture infection may happen so all these are the complications with the in situ intrauterine contraceptive device but see there won't be any congenital anomalies okay usually with the in situ or inside uh intrauterine contraceptive device along with the pregnancy usually in the baby there won't be any congenital anomalies so there is a no risk of a teratogenicity no risk of teratogenicity okay i hope the lecture is uh, helpful now let's continue with the other methods of a contraception in the next video thank you